Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the boys' season finale. I am the leader of the seven, Traz Snell. Ooh. Yeah, I didn't think about this. I was just too excited for this, uh, this episode. Uh, mm. Ooh. Uh, I am the Kraut Taylor Field. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to take a longer one. That's why I was going to drink, but no. <laughs> um, first of all, I have to say, why I'm, I'm happy you're doing a stream on Twitch. Why did you post it on Instagram at 12.20 at night? Or, or sorry, at tw- midnight. At midnight? Well, it's a scary game, and midnight's a scary time. Plus, I'm, I'm not going to post it tomorrow. I'll be, I'll be too busy. So Plus, oh. tomorrow we'll be posting the boys' review. So, Yeah, I guess so. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't guessed by the intro, if you haven't guessed by the video, yes, I'm rocking a nice Homelander Halloween costume. This is, it's pretty great. My favorite part of the gym, they are the Eagles. Those are the best mm-hmm. parts. And then, like, I, I got to stand up carefully because, like, so I bought the suit, came in a few weeks ago, and I'm not trying to brag or anything like that. I've been doing, like, a, I've been doing a bulking phase, and the back of it is constantly, like, breaking apart. Like, three weeks ago, it wasn't. So, but I got to be careful when I stand up because I got a huge, like, Batman and Robin bulge right now. So, you're not going to see that. But the cape, hang on. Oh, yeah. Minute. Like, I that's pretty cool. I understand why Homelander just walks around all the time with it because today, like, while I was getting ready, I was just getting my Gatorade and stuff like that. I was like, I could just walk around the Cape all the time. So, you know what? I'm not, not that I'm saying I could do this on the podcast, but I, I get why he does that. I get why he doesn't take it off. It's just empowering. You know, it's great mm-hmm. to walk around the Cape. And I, I see myself in the, uh, the mirror. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this is great. So, <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, before we get into that, uh, just a few plugs. Obviously, extra extra life is happening uh we got that november 7 24 hour stream tons of things have been announced i along with this fancy new suit i can't get it right now i'm gonna get it in a second uh we have lots of stuff oh look at that look the titles oh. on the team. did you like that executive decision taylor of the, the legal team and myself decide it was best that i have the title again who is this legal team i've never met these people uh but anyways i'm defending this against jessica the third time hopefully the final time is gonna be best of five i've never beaten her but she's never won the Geekers Gauntlet. She's never won any championship, honestly. She just choked. Look at this Homelander suit. I might have to wear this for the gauntlet. I look pretty good with this <laughs> title and everything like that. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good one. Taylor Field is versing – oh, I lost an eagle. Taylor Field is versing Kirkland Patzer in an hour-long Call of Duty Iron Man match. Most person with the most kills in an hour wins, only two times out. It's going to be madness. you got Taylor and Kirkland fighting Tyler Stairs and a mystery partner in the team titles. You got us versus the super civil servants there on the Geek vs. Network or the Geek Ultimate Alliance Network. We're doing a trivia battle, Marvel, Star Wars, DC. We on post- that note, they got I did one little comment on that post, and the whole Super Civil uh, podcast went livid on Twitter. They were getting so rowdy. Holy shit! Well, they just they just know they're gonna lose. You know, they know <laughs> they they can call themselves uh, you know Justice League and all that and everything like that. And sure, the Justice League is lots of time more united. But the thing is. You know, if we don't win, we'll damn sure avenge it. And that's the thing. We're going we're, we're gonna to do pretty good. You know, I, I, I was on their podcast once. We did Marvel trivia. I smoked them. Craig didn't even keep points because of how good I did. So, oh, uh, Civil Silver Servants, I am ready for you. I'm ready for all of you. You know, Chris, he's giving me my own Marvel Alliance host. Give me back talk. All is fair in love awards. Brother versus brother, sister versus sister. We're, we're going to destroy you guys. So that's happening. What else is happening? If we raise $1,500, you see these nice golden Homelander locks they're going to be gone and you should do it because i'm sir i'm definitely going to be doing it but the other day i saw myself in the mirror i was like do i really want to shave my head so make that choice for me because i was like oh no so now you can push me over the line so 1500 you can shave the head bald i said if jessica race is 500 before the match she can pick one of the matches i'm trying to think if there's anything else going we have some a few more events we can announce yet and just a whole slew of games Patreon, as always, go over there. We have ad-free stuff. We have early stuff, exclusive episodes. You can come make us watch a movie, or you can make us review a movie. You can watch a movie with us. You can join After 9 to the Phase 2 tier. After 9 is happening this Saturday at Christmas Live at 8 p.m. PST. That's a show where our Phase 2 patrons can call in. We're talking Hubie's Halloween. We're going to definitely talk about that Doctor Strange news. We're talking about a bunch of halloween themes questions. And, uh, yeah, Taylor Field, is there anything else to plug uh, in the near future here? If not, where can they find us? 
Oh, yeah, just got a stream coming up with me and Ruben on Sunday. That'll be a good time. That's going to be at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, on top of that, I don't think I have anything else to plug. I mean, just check us out on Facebook. Check us out on Twitter. Check us out on our home base, Keepers.ca. Uh, yeah, let's get to it. Gatorade sponsored me. I feel like these past few streams and whatnot. I've been uh, the twenty four hour show. I'm gonna bring a whole like sixteen pack just for myself. But mm. you know, the Homelander of Geek First needs it. Am I the Homelander of Geek First? Too? You think that? <laughs> Do you want to be? Because I don't know if that's a good thing. I mean, when we talk about in this episode, I mean, maybe maybe you're in certain situations. From doing your certain point things. of view, though, your story. I feel like I'm I'm the Homelander. Sure, if, if you say so. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to get into our non-spoilers thought first, and then when you are, or sorry, when we are going to go into spoilers, not you, I don't know why we'd be hearing from you. You can let us know in the comments. But when we get into spoilers, we will give you a three, two, one. It's going to be a very brief non-spoilers. Taylor Field, what did you feel about the finale, season two finale of The Boys? It's come and gone already. It just flew by, no pun intended or anything like that. Uh, did it live up to the hype? And yeah, what were your thoughts? Uh, I'd say it definitely lived up to the hype. It had so many moments that I was just rooting for it. And it's one particular moment I really want to shout out that I really liked. And I, again, like, I feel like the choice of songs that they threw in at certain moments just worked really, really well. And again, it just, it, I like this cliffhanger so much more than season one's cliffhanger. And I feel like, spoiler. well, obviously it's a cliffhanger. I feel like uh, in uh, with this show, it's it leaves me in a position where I feel comfortable like I can wait because I feel like okay we got a very good start to finish story this season and I feel like okay now this chapter is closed and I'm interested to see how things will progress when they tackle season three and that being said this this last episode just tied up everything so nicely and I'm so happy that they did that because I feel like they had a lot left open but tied up yes everything I disagree with that There's well no 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 hear me hear me the main plot point has been tied up like really really well but the other things that they intentionally left out in the open those things are purposely you know left in the back burner for that next season and I'm glad because there's all these little breadcrumbs that have been lay, laid out for a season three that just had me so excited to see how it's going to come into play which is already confirmed, and we're getting the superhero X Men show too, and everything like that. So, boys is sticking around. So, was it your final thoughts? Uh, yeah, it's just good. This might be this is probably one of my favorite season finales of a show in a long, long time. Yeah, I've a. I don't know if I can say that because lately shows like I just rewatched Hunting Hill House. That's a great finale, The Americans. But I think it's one of the better ones, and that's where I am in this. I think. I've been saying this for a while, but I think the boys, is just, it's just outstanding. They're knocking out of the park. Uh, every, like Any cons I have, for the most part, maybe sometimes the deep, but for the most part, it's all pretty minor stuff. That's the same thing with this episode. I just feel they knocked it out of the park. They did last week. So last week, I still feel is the best episode of the series. This came very close to it, but I wasn't expecting to top that. I was just wanting almost as good, and that's what I got. It's not like sometimes the Game of Thrones finales were good. But sometimes they were just a little bit of a lull and it was just like the calm down episode. This was definitely not the calm down episode. Tons of stuff went down. It was a satisfying finale. It left the door open for many things. I just, I, I, this is how I praise the show all the time. But how, how so many characters have so much level of depth and detail and development is just my favorite thing. And there's especially, you know, Homelander. He's my boy. I'm talking, you know, rocking right now and everything like that. But with him, Butcher, Becca, Huey, Huey a little bit. I feel like Huey was a bit more in the back burner in this episode, but that's just because there's so much going on. Stormfront, even uh, I can't remember uh, Giancarlo uh, Esposato's name, or I can't remember how you say his actual name now, but the guy that's running Vought now. Like, there's just so many good moments, but especially with Butcher and Homelander, this whole season has been kind of revolving door of those two and how they kind of mirror each other. And this episode, again, just did such a phenomenal job of showing you know, how they, you know, maybe one character has, you know, little emotions, but he's more of an angry, dangerous guy, and the other guy's a little way around. Even then, they're so similar. I can't wait to get into some of the things that happened, but uh, they just did a fantastic job. I think it was a great season ender. They left it with some, it was like some cliffhangers, but just some, just some routes they could go to. It feels like it's, it was a solid season. Some stuff very surprised me that happened in this episode, but 
great acting, some great action. If I had any minor cons, I think there's just one scene in particular that went on a tad too long, but even then, uh, nothing too major. So anything to say before we get into spoilers? Nope. All right. Three, two, one. We're getting into spoilers. And you know what? Before we get into spoilers, we're going to throw out our first ad break. You know, and this so this brings up a good story. We got a review the other day. No, be be nice, be nice, because he left a nice review. No, I'm get, well. He still gave us three out of five stars, so you know, well, that's cash, that's but. that's more than fifty percent. So yeah, I know, but people, we need to. We're getting close. We're nine. So by March, we need to have two hundred reviews, and it has to be an average of four stars to become Ron Tomato certified critics. We could do this. We could be on Ron Tomatoes, and everyone. We, we could become the people that other people hate. But the thing is, so he left a review. And if you're listening to this, I, oh, I don't know if I have. Let me look up his name. Uh, but if you're listening to this, I'm not mad at you at all. Because here's the thing. Well, I'm about to throw you at, and we do this on Geek Old Alliance. Sometimes I pipe them in on our stuff. But I'm going to start throwing them in after because it saves me a bit of editing time. So what we do is we are with a service, Spreaker. And it's kind of this thing like, oh, for every how many minutes you go, there's so many ad, blah, blah, blah. And they've been great because they provide us gear and everything like that help us support the show so this person uh i shouldn't even look it up i have no idea it's a l c h a l a n t uh, ashalant i don't know but he said confused he said podcast host said they don't get uh they don't like to get political but had to speak politically about the episode of the voice and said it's no secret he's not a fan of our president dot 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 and then the same advertising supporting the opposing side i don't think podcasters should run ads they don't support so here's the thing with our ads. I always say the two things is one, we don't get to pick the ads and two, and I probably didn't say that last week, of course, but two, we never had to control the volume. I think that just depends on where you're listening. I've listened on Spotify where the ads are completely fine. I've listened on Apple where it's like rocking loud. And it's the same thing with this. We are not in a point where we've had some people, we've had sponsors before, but that's different. People come to say, oh, this will work. This wouldn't. This is just a system, our partner that they choose the ads for us. And they're based on and I, I'm not saying anything against you and what you do, everything like that, but they're based on what you listen to. So there's stuff where Taylor's gotten like, I don't know, a car ad and I get like a beef jerky ad, but it's the exact same episode. So it's like, it goes down to your listen. So I'm going to throw that. We don't know what this ad is. Always watch your audio, but then we're getting into spoilers. And we're back. We're back. <laughs> t- t- what, Taylor? Were you worried I was going to say something? I was worried. I was worried, but no, you handled it like a pro. I, before we get into this, I'm just, I'm going to send you something. I made a little something. And I'm gonna send it to you. And I just want you this. to. I want you to tell me what you think of it. Sure. And then yeah. while I look at this, uh, before I do that, uh, I can do whatever I want. Oh my god, <laughs> boy, with the butt crack and everything. Yeah, Isn't that spoilers. a good shot? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Biden Harris, 2020. So let's get in this episode. So let's start with Homelander. He's my boy. He's the guy I want to talk to, and he went through a ride in this episode. So we. I want to start with them, but I don't know where to go. I don't know if I want to start at the beginning, the end. I would just start, I mean, we can go through many different things. We can see how he, obviously, we can start where he's looked like he was generally being a caring father. I feel like he could see a lot of himself and his son, and there was the moments where things got flustered at that pizza restaurant place. But I think the one really big thing was him just connecting with his son at the cabin. And that mm-hmm. just totally, like, I felt like, okay, this is like a bit of there a bit of like a decent human being inside homelander well i've always there. told you there is every episode we always see something where uh, i just i just saw he was fucked up in the other episodes no but i've pointed out many occasions where it shows he's not completely gone even in this episode i i only put out the quote on twitter just because it was so funny where they're at the cabin and he's talking about like how his life's so hard blah, 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 and Stormfront gets in there and she's like yeah it's really tough for people that look like us you know blah, blah. and then she just keeps she gives her whole speech and she's just like and that's what white genocide is and then he just I've <laughs> never heard that term before <laughs> the way Homelander looked at her he's like and then like she saw all him and then he's like and he smiled like gave her a wing but we talked about this before that this would be a thing where like homelander is a terrible terrible person but there's never been no signs that he is a racist so when she said white genocide he was like like what and like <laughs> and that threw me off the scent because i still thought stormfront was going to make it out and i'll talk to you about that in a second but my well we is- don't know she's dead like they didn't confirm i mean she could still be alive just no arms and legs anakin okay. style she's in well unless she comes back as darth vader i don't think she's in any position like you said you're right she's not we don't have it confirmed but i don't know if she's in any position to mess people up that's true 
So unless yeah, they heal her. So that's why. So unless there is something that happens, yeah, barring that, let's say she's out of the show. I did think, even in that way, I didn't think she'd be taken out because I thought again it would come to a point where Homelander was eventually going to have to make a choice. So why do you think they still threw in that, like, like, I don't, like, so, they throw in that white genocide thing. And then, like I said, they throw, they show this look of Homelander and he kind of looks like uneasy about it. But to me, let's say she is dead. I don't think you need to make him feel uneasy about it because it didn't lead anywhere. Or that story's not leading anywhere. Of like, because every time he would just see that she is talking about kind of superheroes and being powerful and their people. And then like secretly it was more about, like white power and everything like that but he didn't look at it like that way you know he looked at it like oh she means something else but so if she's out of the show whatever it's live dead blah, blah, if she's out of the show i was a little caught off guard by that i'm not sure if that was just to throw my scent off of because like i said i thought oh he's reacting like this seems weird so eventually they'll start to butt heads about it so what did you take about that because what we did get confirmed we said he's an asshole but homelander's still not a racist asshole i mean i i take it as that they just cemented his I mean, even if she dies, you know, fine, whatever. But I just, I, at the end of the day, I see it as it's just cementing his foundation that, yeah, he's not racist. He does not, <laughs> he does not partake in that. Because this whole time, like, you couldn't really tell. It was kind of like back and forth. Not really like back and forth, but like they didn't give you a for sure guarantee that he was completely against it. They made it seem like she was slowly turning him around on that in that sense. But this just confirmed it because he's like, okay. And he looks back at his son. So, so yeah, that was the three things I want to talk about. One, the thing that uh, they went to the vault restaurant and then his son's freaking out. And he talks about he needs his mom and he just flies him off. Stormfront looks pissed. So again, like I've talked about the whole season. That's why Homelander, I think is one of the best characters in all media right now. He's just monster. But in this moment, he feels for his son. Like you said, the cabin, they have these great conversations about, I went through the same thing, but I can be here to help you. He has that moment with Stormfront where he gives her that, like, eh, I don't know. And then three, even though it's in this moment, like, it's super emotionally charged. So we get to the moment. And we'll talk about more stuff later. But we get to the moment where a, a damaged Stormfront finds Becca and finds uh, Luke. Like, Luke's his name, right? Uh, I thought it was Ryan. It is Ryan. I think Luke's, uh, I think that's his actor name. Like, his real, his, sorry. Oh, okay, His sure. real life name, not <laughs> his actor name. This 10-year-old has a stage name or anything. But anyway, so... They, she finds him, the fight ensues. Becca hits her with a knife right in the eye. Just just gnarly. Just like which was good because it was good to see that I guess she could actually be taken like I guess the bolts weren't taken out because was that the armor, I guess? Is that what was deflecting them? Because she can get taken uh, out by a knife, but those I, she's getting I shot. thought she was just bulletproof. I mean, if you get stabbed in the eye, I mean I feel like the eye is different from thick skin. Bulletproof, but not knife proof, I see. So anyway, so that happens and she's about to kill Becca. She's choking her out. Butcher's hitting her with a crowbar. Nothing happened. And then Ryan gets really upset. They kind of go back to this theme later where they're talking about him trying to get his laser eyes. And then Homelander's like, well, use your hatred. And so, you know, it's almost like the Full Xavier. Palpatine. Well, that and it's the Xavier uh, Magneto moment in first class. Of, like the moment of like hatred and serenity or whatever he says like that. So it's kind of like that scene. So he sees Stormfront hurt. He's obviously hates her. He goes to shoot Stormfront. Burns her to a fucking Chris. Like, she, no legs. Or she literally, yeah, you're right. She looks like Anakin Skywalker yeah. at the end. Of, like, Obi-Wan should be around. Except there. she lost her mind. She was speaking a different language. Or she's speaking German. And I think Anakin kind of lost his mind, too. <laughs> I'm not going to yeah. lie. <laughs> he was not in the best shape. So anyways, but in that moment, too, he also sliced his mom's neck. And poor Butcher has to, his wife has to die again. And like, I, I didn't know, because this is fun. Did you know this, uh, Amazon does trivia if you hit it? No, I didn't know. So like when you're watching a scene, it was like, oh, in the comic, she also died by a laser from a super child and stuff like that. So it's really fun. Mm. But I guess it's kind of like worrisome of like, I don't know when they pop up because this is the first time I watched a little bit of the app and then I watched on my uh, TV. But so then he has this moment where, butcher is crying over becca of course the kids they're crying everyone's looking upset homelander just took out a bunch of vaught guards so he's covered in blood the first time we've seen his hair like messed up since the airplane scene and he's just, just all wrecked and when he lands down he's very upset with storm like he's very upset Stormfront's dead obviously we talked about that shot of like is this like a dream sequence what is this obviously it was storm i i did think like we we're going the second I saw the final set piece was in a woods, I'm like, okay, so this shot is real. Something's going to happen. But it was just this question of like, is it Stormfront or is it going to be the kid? I wasn't sure. And obviously it was Stormfront. I was surprised because I thought they would keep her alive one more season. But anyway, so this all happens. 
And he says, like, you know, Ryan, what did you do? And everything like that. And he says, come here. So, obviously, he was going to take the kid. He was angry. But he, to me, I don't think he was going to kill Ryan. I think he was just, he understood that he did make a mistake. He's upset, but he's understood he made a mistake because he's probably made those same mistakes of killing people violently and doesn't really know better. And even when he's done it, he might feel regretful. So, I feel like he was going to take him. And there's that moment where I feel like it's, like, the, maybe the most human moment they have both had Butcher and Homelander together. He's like, he st- Butcher like steps in front of the kid and he's just like, this guy fucking, or this little, this little shit killed your fucking wife. Like you're going to take a bullet for him. And, but like, I'm not, I'm paraphrasing, but like the way he said it, he just felt like, man, like he killed your wife. Like, why are you defending him? Not even like a way to like, to twist him to literally be like, I, like, oh, he killed Becca, like, your wife. So I felt that was another genuine moment. But how do you take that? Do you take he was going to kill this kid? Or what, how did you take him? What, did you, what do you think he wanted to do with Ryan when he wanted to get him at the end? I figured he was just going to discipline him. I don't know in what <laughs> way, but just kind of discipline him and coax him into properly, I don't know, superior etiquette. I don't know if that's the term. But just the, the whole ordeal of him just – going through that it, it was hard because i'm trying to compare it in the sense where you have homelander who had people that were was afraid of him and he i doubt that homelander did anything like that when he was a kid i mean i'm sure he probably had accidents but he had scientists that were trying to understand and trying to guide him and help him coax him along and in this case you just have the son who just has no one really and it just doesn't know how to control his emotions not to say homelander had his emotions controlled but i feel like between the two of them going at it when they were at that same age, I feel like Homelander had a little bit of a more easier time, possibly. Really? Not, not to mean, I don't, that doesn't mean he had a, like a nicer time, but I think he had an easier time trying to like figure out his powers and stuff like that. See, even if it's not someone like his mother, I still took as a child or something like that, he could have been in a situation where he didn't know he had or eyes and then all of a sudden he just burns up a person. He feels all scared and everything like that. Like I just felt like he felt it was, it was a, it was an accidental casualty, but unfortunately for the casualty, it happened to be Stormfront in it and no one else, you know? And look, even the thing, it comes down like Homelander's mm. thing. See, and he has the flag on, too. I don't really like that. I wear it up. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like that. But, yeah. uh, and then, so they, we get to this moment that we've been building to. So I got to give a big shout-out because last season I felt they didn't use her as well. Maybe this whole season has been used well. But that moment in the final fight, which we'll get into later on with all the girls versus each other, when she said, uh, what, what did she call her again? Hey, Kraut. Hey, Kraut. And then she punched her. I literally, that's the most excited I've ever been for Queen Maven. I was like, yeah, like, let's go. And it was so cool. That scene I didn't love because I liked when they got her down and they were kicking her. And then Stormfront gets up. And then they get her down and just, like, kick her again. I thought it was kind of – it just – the fight went on too long, and it, it was hype, and then it got a little anticlimactic. And I think that – I don't even know if it's a budgetary thing. I just think that they got a little uncreative with the fight eventually where they just were all just punching each other. Like, they're literally just punching. It was like punch, I punch, thought punch. it was fitting. I felt like it fit the vibe. <laughs> I think it did for a bit, but then it just – I think it just went on for so long where I was like, okay, I get this. Like, it's punch, kick, punch, kick. Like, I get it. But anyway, so – she shows up and then she does that big play where, you know, Homelander's going to blow away Butcher because he's protecting the kid. And then he go, she goes, oh, you're going to leave them alone. You're going to leave Starlight alone. And she says, if not, and me and Elena, if not, I'm going to release the foot. She didn't say me and Elena. So it sounds like Elena maybe didn't leave her. So that's, a, that's the thing that we answered last week. But, uh, yeah, what did you think about that? And then how do you think, obviously, we didn't get much more with him other than uh, – Homelander's gonna fucking snap because that press conference that was so good when they like zoom into his eyes and mm-hmm. his eyes look like they're literally pulsing like he just looked like a psychopath and off so we get the end which so you probably you obviously got a big kick out of him masturbating on the bill okay hang on hey we're gonna rewind it we're going too far ahead <laughs> so okay. with Qu- queen Maeve, yeah. i know you're all about that homelander just jerking at stuff um the the queen Maeve stuff i definitely agree i think she's uh, she's just been phenomenal this season and i have to say like in terms of when shows and movies do that you know woman empowering stuff I mean, I feel like in some ways, like it can be done, it can be done where it's a little bit iffy and other ways it can just be done where it's just, it blends with the story. It blends in well. And I think it's freaking awesome. And I I definitely understand, like when I look at like Avengers Endgame, like I feel like that whole scene, like, no, hear me out, hear me out. I love that that scene is in there. I really do. But at the same time, it can often feel like it's just, it's so 
like really just put there at times. But when you have a show like The Boys, you generally have just it just works in the story. It's cohesive. You got Kimiko, you have Starlight with the boys there, and then you got Queen Maeve that just pops up. And then it's just hilarious. I love the scene where Kimiko is just taken down, and then you have the boys going shooting, doing no damage, but get blasted back. And then Starlight goes in and throw in a punch, gets knocked back. That battle was awesome. And Queen Maeve just, hey, crow, and then punches her. And then all, like, Kimiko smaps her neck back starlight jumps back and they all just start beating down like superhero uh super lady superhero team up just powwow it's just it was freaking awesome and i was loving it the music kicked in i thought this is just hilarious and i just i'm like i'm rooting for them like i love starlight i really like kimiko i thought she was just she's just such an awesome character and when that part too when she started to laugh and like i really really like frenchie I don't know if it's just because his French accent or I love the way he was dressed in this episode too, but she's laughing and then he's like, oh, he's going to put her foot up your ass. Like what's that in that French accent? And uh, it's just awesome. Uh, yeah, it just had me so excited that scene. Uh, but yeah, Queen Maeve was just fantastic when she confronted Homelander and had the footage and all that stuff and got them, got uh, Homelander to basically ceases hostilities and just that tense moment of butcher and ryan walking past homelander just oh i know that that, so that was great like it was such like symbolism of like, he's, he's walking right past him with his kid like he's literally taking your kid away from you right in front of you and it was like especially to think where we were last season how it ended with butcher and them finding out about the sun and then it looking like homelander in complete control where it's the other way around where Homelander really has nothing. He lost Stormfront. He doesn't have Ryan. And he has really no, he has nothing over everybody. Like he can't do anything. That's why I think, because I don't know where the books are, how long they go. Like I've purposely not looked in the Marvel DC. I do, but this like, you know, I'm going to enjoy the ride. I don't know if the series is over, what the deal is, but I feel like, I don't know if it's next season or the season before, but I feel like we are soon going to get that Homelander snapping point because maybe not oh. next year. Because there's that seems like there's some plot going on, but it's just like he is just he is on he's lost so much and he is just on the edge and it's just like I said that press conference scene and it's just uh, it, it, because it's just one this whole season which has proved that he's completely wrong he's been trying to tell himself that he doesn't need anybody but at the end of the day when it comes down to like choosing his son or choosing the the fans or like whatever the Homelander supporters he chooses them because she says like. He, he, she's like, if I share this footage, everyone will know. And he's like, well, if everyone knows, I'm going to destroy everything and everybody. And she goes, yeah, but they'll know who the fucking wants you are. No one will love you ever again. And then he, like, puts his head down and he's thinking about it. And he hears, like, the Homelander chant. <laughs> Homelander, Homelander. Which is all the way. Think about, like, how I think it was episode three of the last, those first batch when he killed himself, like, killed the, what, what, a doppelganger. And he's just saying, yeah. like, I don't need anyone else but myself. We've seen that multiple times. He needed Stormfront. He needed somebody. And then again, it shows, no, he needs the people. He needs the support. He can't be alone. He, he, he literally can't. So, but now he's very alone. So that's where I think it's going to be interesting. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting next year. Yeah, leading, like, segueing that to the scene where he's just, I, it took me a second to figure it out because I wasn't sure if he was jerking it or what he was doing. But no, he sure was. And he's just like, I can do whatever I want. I can do whatever I fucking want and then his eyes turn red and he's just it's just that shot and that's what i said to you just him he's just his cheeks clapping in the wind as he's just like going at it like jerking it hard and then just that shot which is gonna it's a great thumbnail ladies and gentlemen him just with the moon behind him so so I, that scene I need to sit on it for a while because I just don't know I liked it and I didn't like it at the same time I liked it because it just shows that he is just his psyche is gone <laughs> but I think he was just it was a it was like it, it fits perfectly with the boys so I'm not saying take it out because that's the boys I just think sometimes like a comedian not every joke works for you and I think just in that moment where so much serious stuff was happening and so much happy stuff was happening and then we get hit like I so for me, I feel the perfect moment of ending on Homelander was that press conference. I think I would have honestly been fine with that this scene opening season three of him masturbating and being all crazy. I think that would have been a good like showing where he is now. But I think just like his voice, like no crowd, it's just mute, like it's muffled, and you just see that those eyes, those piercing eyes. To me, that showed like 
man, he's he's going to lose it. And he might lose it, but this was just in such, like, a comedic way where it's, like, I felt it took away from that press conference, like, a little bit, you know? Like, I like I get it. it. It was funny. That's the part that hurts me, you know? And I got to hate – one thing about these suits, anytime the Velcro hits it, just easy snag, you know? It's oh. a good thing. But, yeah, so I – I liked that scene and I didn't like the scene. I'll have to wait. I'll really have to let it sit for a while because I wasn't expecting that. But the second, the second he was moving around so much and was just from his chest, I'm like, oh, I know what this fucker's doing, you know. <laughs> um, God, where do I want to go with that? Uh, let's talk about mm-hmm. uh, cause yeah, we'll probably talk about Homeland, but I think we hit everything. Uh, let's talk about the church, and it seems like you know you had a good theory, but. Uh, it wasn't exactly they're, right. they're they're not out yet they're not out yet mm, i think you're wrong sir I, because so it looks like your theory was they were the head poppers so they could get people in the seven it looks like that they, i'm wrong with although yeah. in that sense we That's don't necessarily about. know what context she is because i mean she her what is what is her goal and what is she trying to do because obviously she took down Vought or at least got Vought on lockdown and then she obviously dealt with the head of the church guy a little bit there but then the church is still running rambunctiously with whatever they're doing so I'm wondering like is she gonna what is she gonna do well, what not is her that playing? rambunctious if they just lost their leader to it they lost their leader true but I mean the church is still pretty powerful I mean the, if you look at what they've just accumulated I mean, even the deep confessed, like I gave you all my bank accounts and all that stuff. So they're pretty well off. Yeah, it's it's tough with her because we we just got introduced to her this season, I think, right? Even if she was in last season, she wasn't in a big role. So she and she's the she's I know she's running for Congress, but she was also the daughter of the original president of Vought, right? Or did I get that wrong? Uh I don't know. Okay, so maybe I might be wrong or right or wrong about that, so I'll throw that out. But it's tough because she's a wild card because we haven't got to see that much of her. So it's just kind of thinking about what her end game is. Obviously, she's a soup, so we know that about her now. Um, we know that she was a part of the head explodings at the the hearing, but and that's the thing like so she took out certain ones, but not all of them. So it, it, that's the thing where I I have nothing to go off of. Maybe there is something in the comments, but. So she is now running for Congress and she has Huey. Of course, Huey going to end up in a bad situation again, trying to go out on his own. But uh, yeah, like I obviously the way they set it up, I know she's going to be the villain or a villainess. But at the same point, when I looked at what she's done so far, I, I was going to say like the church guy is shady. There's other people she killed, but then she did kill innocent people and she did kill that former vice president. If it was, uh, like I said, I don't, maybe it wasn't her father, but even then if she killed him, that was right before he's about to testify and put a bunch of people away, right? So clearly it feels like it's not like she's like on team bot or all against them. It just seems like she is looking out for her own will and what that is, we don't know yet. And I, I have no theories yet just because we don't know that much about her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah, I don't know. She was the last person I expected to actually be yeah. the, that villain, but uh, she's definitely got her own agenda, whether she's trying to hide the fact that she's a soup through Vought or who knows what way. Uh, Carl uh, Esposito, Esposito, how did you say his name was originally? So I said John Carl Esposito, but I think it's Esposito. Es- Esposito. No, Esposito. Esposito. Esposito, yeah. okay. Yeah, so Carl Esposito, as Posito, uh, I think Pancarlo. his character. <laughs> I think his character is uh, obviously protected in some shape or form with her because he sh- she's not harming him or in any shape or form. Not yet. She's well, not yet, but she's letting him make all these deals accordingly. Um, so it's it's just interesting, and I definitely like I like his his play and connection in this role and everything because he's he's got his own agenda or something yeah, like it's. Gosh. He's like Gus, yeah. Uh, he just, uh, but yeah, no, instead of getting to him right away, just with her, it just makes me really question, because yeah, we don't have much to go off of. She killed that CIA agent at the beginning. She killed everyone in that room, and then she killed mm-hmm. the leader of the Church of Light. So she does have an agenda, and we now know that she obviously has to be within close proximity. So I'm wondering, I kind of want to rewatch that scene where the CIA agent goes and sees the boys in like episode two or three. And I want to see if we can see her or like she's kicking around or something. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing too, I want to see is her eyes in that courtroom. I know they've hit it, so you won't be able to see it, but her eyes obviously shift over. So 
That's something she, interesting. She was just running around in the courtroom, so you would just she wouldn't be able to like hide and everything like that. And I guess my question is, so like with Stormfront, we saw she got killed, so she wasn't like a Homelander type where she was indestructible. Like, can Homelander's head get exploded? Um, I would think any of them can, because it's technically a force of gravity, I would think, or some kind of psychic yeah. pure energy. Yeah, so it's it's gonna be interesting because there's these there's the boys left, there's certain members of the seven, there's John Carlos, so there's like key people left that she didn't take out and why and the, on both sides, right? Same thing, the church guy, why did she really take him out? They were working together fine, but she took him out, other than him being like, Oh, you gotta cut us some money and you know, forget about the taxes and it's like, Yeah, I guess that could be reason to kill him, but I still think that's pretty minor, so it's gonna be it's interesting. I have I, there's a lot of I imagine theories that be thrown around. That's the unfortunate. I'm gonna have to stay away from them because I don't want to get spoiled in case there's something in the comic books. But um, yeah, I don't know. So you 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 were you're 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 not exactly right yet. You're you were close with that church theory. I th- I thought you had it tonight, and then yeah, disappeared. I'm still hoping the church does pop off in season three. I'm betting they will. They need a you know they killed uh, Madeline or whatever her name was, Lady Madeline in the first season, and they just threw someone in to replace her as leader and bought in season two. So they can replace these leaders pretty easily. The deep, he's going to be a leader. And then that's well, happened. he's he's a hundred percent going back to being the bad side now. He was so pissed at uh, the church. Yeah, well, the church guy's dead, but yeah, that also happened at the beginning of the episode. More of my like, uh, kind of uh, prediction as far as A Train becoming more good because at the end of the day, he got on the seven and he did say, like, like again, he so he did it. He said, like, I want to be back on the seven, I can't be on it with her, with her, her referring to Stormfront being on the team, but it felt more personal than that because he had heard the news that the deep was going back in and he wasn't because he was too slow and all this stuff, so he was pissed like he did do and he said like to get back on the seven i believe that he did get back on the team but i do wonder now next season when he gets back on the team i don't think he's gonna be like hey train i'm back with team i think he's gonna start looking around and be like uh there's more wrong with this than i thought he might see homeland or do some shady stuff and might question it this time instead of looking the other way so even though sure he did that selfish selfish game to get back on the seven giving them the pdr i still felt there was a little more good guidance where yeah the deep was just taking it bad and he was all mad and i again i hope that's the route they go and i did like that these last few episodes we got very little deep because i'm not the biggest fan of deep and i think he has a very kind of touchy storyline and i feel like they've not done it the best so i think the lesser the better with that character right now but uh yeah that was interesting dynamic with those two and it ended a trains uh back on the seven which probably not good for his health but well he seems to like be recuperating a little bit there i i do want to yeah, say but, that uh, but he wait until a situation where he has to really push it like he has to really run mm, and something bad's gonna happen you know i do like how they got uh, starlight back on the seven i like how she's rocking her old uniform now too so it just shows that they've got him by the balls kind of <laughs> yeah so i like that and that's what they did. I guess we forgot to mention that. And so here's my only other minor complaint about the episode, because I had talked to you about this before, why I didn't think Stormfront was going to die this season, because I thought it might be too quick. I thought the whole, we bring Ryan in the cabin, the boys are here, uh, they reveal she is married to the former Vaughn, she's a Nazi, she goes back in town, she comes back, they get Becca. I felt that last 20, or maybe not the last 20, but like the 20 minutes before that, it was all good stuff. But I felt it was, I'm not going to use the word rushed, but close to it, I felt. I felt we were really all over, especially like it was Stormfront. She was like there at the cabin. She went back to Vought just to get mad at the TV, and then she came right back to the cabin. It was like, we need like a little more time to see more of the effects, I think, of the world turning on her. Because it was literally just like, okay, the world hates her, and then she's dead. So I just feel like even just seeing her go out in public trying to calm people down, like, I'm not this. Oh, you're, more. no, that any person who is in a, a position of publicity or cele- being a celebrity and has stuff like that or any other type of horrible content spread around them like that, the number one thing you do is just fall silent and back away. And she's pissed, so she's going to go to the source. Yeah, I, I guess so. I just felt like the source, so she didn't... How did she know they were there at that point, though? The boys and Annie and all that. She was just kind of coming back. Well, she right? found out that the Vought team was sent there, right? right so she probably okay. knew somehow. No, no, That's fair, why she yeah. went to Vought. Yeah, fair enough. So, yeah, I guess so. There was a lot. I just think you could have, 
Like I said, maybe not Al. Well, the only reason on the Paula, Paula Peggy said like, oh, you don't do that. I just feel like you could have found some sort of reason because let's say if she is dead, we never really got that. You know, like I would like to see him a bit more. I'm not saying she need to go out there like Homeland or like Daydream and like blow everybody up. But I just wanted to see. I, I think like her fall of grace happened a little too quick for me for a character that was in quite a bit of the season. Now it just kind of, if she is dead, doesn't feel like a cliff note, but feels like more minor than I thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be a much grander storyline. It led to the death of Becca. Sure. But I feel like that was not inevitable, but like with bought and Homelander, it's like her life of survival or her percentage was already not good. So I think the Stormfront stuff could handled, be handled a little bit better at the end. But again, I thought it was a fun way to like outsmart her and everything like that. I, I really don't think Stormfront is dead. I feel like they would have shown really it. I feel on. like she healed up from her laser scars from Homelander. Mm-hmm. So I legit feel like she's not going to grow limbs, but I think she's going to grow back. And it fits with the boy's sense of humor. That's my pitch for season three is we're going to see a fucked up looking Stormfront come back. And just mm-hmm. they're going to like question her or get more information from her. Because she is 100 years old. She is the first super. She is the original married to Vought and knows things. So I feel like they'll deep dive and question her interrogator on some stuff but uh i do like how everything kind of came together at that that scene when she just you know appeared and was just going to town and uh that uh that whole dilemma again with homelander i love when he landed and that uh, swat team was inside the house and he just he he walks Where's in and son? he's like did someone say i heard the name butcher and then they just <laughs> they don't say anything and he closes the door behind him and then he's like where's my son and you just you feel for these guys because the idiot on the walk he says did you get the kid oh, I know. <laughs> they just look so defeated and then yeah he gets lasered and I don't know why everyone would bother lifting their guns up. It's just it's useless. You got to try, right? I try. guess. I was trying my best to go, get a good screenshot for later. You know, that's why I was pointing at the camera. You know? mm, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I, you got to, tr- like, I don't know. Like, I guess you got to shoot just to see. You never know, right? But, uh, or even by time. But yeah, he did, he massacred all of them. He just walked out of the room and he was covered in blood. So mm-hmm. it didn't go well for them. Mm-hmm. Um. God, there's something else that I had on Huey and Front. Annie are back to being like together together now, which is good because I was really worried he was going to do the whole like, yeah, I need to be on my own for a bit. And I was like, Ugh, this is fucking like cliche. And we see this in like every fucking show. And then when he's like, oh, not from you, just from like everything else. So I was like, okay, good. Like, not that I'm like, oh, I'm not like, they're not my fucking new Raylo, but I just like, sometimes shows like I just feel like on purpose they like delay the people getting together just like just put them together okay I think we got enough of that this season of them being apart but then realizing they're better together Mm -hmm. he has to stop lying as so much she you know trusts him now fully again so hopefully they can keep that going so that happened and then the other thing was again I forgot to mention this earlier but Butcher had another butcher asshole douchebag moment at the very beginning of this episode where he made that deal to get ship off uh, Ryan and just keep Becca to himself. And like, again, this was some of what happened last week with his dad and everything like this. This was showing obviously he breaks away from it, but this was again showing of like, at times he's still just such like, he's like, when we talk about comparable to Homelander, like he's just so about himself and he doesn't care. And that moment, that deal was so, like he asked for Becca, but bullshit. He just wanted his wife back and he found a Mm -hmm. perfect way to try and do it. But that's what, again, it shows the growth of this character this season that at the end of the day, he couldn't go through the deal and he was willing to sacrifice his own life to go back on that deal. And obviously it didn't work out. We lost Becca again. He stuck with this kid who he fucking hates. Like, even though that's my only one thing as far as if it's a cop out is, they were, I don't know where that kid is being taken. I just hope it's not like he's gone. And then like, we see that kid like twice a season, like, Oh, I'm checking up on you, Ryan. No, That's we'll what... get him back in like season five and he'll come and save the day. I dressed, hope, like, but you, you remember Dexter when he had that kid. And then when spoilers for season four, tune out for 30 seconds when they, you watched Dexter. So right? That came out like a decade ago. Oh my God. I know, spoilers. but you never, you never know. But so when they killed off Rita, 
it was like, oh, how's Dexter going to handle being a single father? And then every episode, it was just like, oh, he's with Rosita, the babysitter. And, like, he was never around with the kid. So that's where I was like, when they had that moment and they were sitting there by the river and he has that finally, like, great. Because the first time after Becca, he legitimately was going to, he was thinking about killing that kid. He picked up the crowbar. He was, like, he was looking anger but he they are having this great moment where they're sitting down he gives him the saint joe what is it saint christopher or whatever it is the necklace sure <laughs> and he said his mom becca gave it to him for safety it's kept him safe pretty much so i'm giving it to you but then like the cia and everything pick him up and he's just like you remember what you said and then he's like yeah don't be a cunt he's like yeah don't be a cunt like and then like they ship off the kids so that's just my word like i know we'll see him of course but i liked that aspect of oh man what's what you're gonna do one as with this kid is just having a kid in general but two this kid that he fucking hates for multiple reasons it's homelander's son so it's gonna remind him of the time his wife got raped it's a soup so he just fucking hates soups and then it's also the kid that killed his own wife so i'm like this can be a great dynamic and then the second he got taken away that's why i'm withholding judgment till next season but I am worried we might get that Dexter like, oh, yeah, he's doing great. And then whenever the plot needs him to come in, he comes in. But I hope, I hope that's not what we get. Mm. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I hope they wouldn't do something like that. I mean, I know my brain's slowing down. It's over 1, 1 a.m. now. It's over <laughs> um, 1. It's over over one. 1. Yeah, I think that, uh, I mean, I, I hope they don't pull him whenever they need him just as like plot armor as a plot device. I honestly feel like they're going to hold him back and then in two seasons, maybe three, they'll bring him back as a main character or something like that where he's older Whoa. and he's got, his, he's got his powers ready to go, two which to I would love. Seasons. Oh, yeah. I don't want them to rush out. Like he's what, like 13 right now. Wow. So I don't want him to be like, yeah, 14, he's good to go, dressed like a soup, and he's got his powers under control. No, but there's I other want, ways he uh, can be in the show. Yeah, I guess so. But I feel like this was his ending for now. I feel like it was a solid write-off to his story, at least for like a season. Like, and how can Butcher make sure he's okay if he's not even around him? Oh, I think he trusts that CIA lady. I mean, she's come through, pr- like, but they have a not, pretty good relationship. I'm not saying he can't trust her, but it's just the fact that, like, you make sure you protect my son. And he's like, yeah, I promise. And then he ships him off. Like, to me, I thought Butcher would have been like... Well, he man. did. He protected him and kept him out of Vought hands and out of Homelander's hands. I guess. I don't know if Beck would be so thrilled about that. But yeah, and then we forgot to mention too, the boys are no longer criminals. They got offered a job. Uh, Frenchie and uh, oh, what's her name? Kamiko is looking like they're striking up a relationship now. They are dancing. So I thought they were going to kiss. Didn't happen, but maybe that's going to happen down the line. Uh, Mother's Milk ended up back with his family. So that was good. I was happy because it's just like, man, this guy, like, he's put up with a lot of crap and everything like that. So everyone was going to a happy ending. And then, yeah, we cut to homelander getting a happy ending maybe that's what the joke is supposed Ooh, to be everyone's yeah. getting a happy ending and he's giving it he has to give himself one so you know what if they went that deep then i applaud you and maybe i like it but it was it was just such a sharp left turn but uh i think i've hit on everything i i did like that one joke of uh annie's mom being like really like like the really pale like guy with the weak handshake yeah. like, and she's like mom like, so i like that um, one of the big things that I really liked, and again, I'm not getting political or anything like that, but just you, the whole idea of just Stormfront, I know, choose my words wisely. They have Stormfront and in this show, she's just worshipped and she's just this huge icon and celebrity and all that mumbo jumbo. And sure enough, it's just, just people, sure. yeah, sure enough, you know, I, I'm not saying everyone's bad out there or anything like that. People deserve the benefit of the doubt. By let's, God, they all do. But I'm just... This. So let's let's say tomorrow it came out a bunch of reports that Nick Cage was actually secretly a Nazi and there was a bunch of footage and stuff like that and photos and you're going to give the whole, oh, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. This was like... No, 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 no. Now I'm saying people deserve the benefit of the doubt if they're not to that degree of evil or like weird. Like well, if they like messed it because up. Because it literally was photos for a hundred years ago wearing Nazi uniforms. That's oh, pretty damn oh I know. It's, it's super, super bad. And I'm not saying like, oh yeah, if, if they come out and say you're a Nazi, I'm not going to go, oh, you get the benefit of the doubt. That's fucked up. I'm going <laughs> I'm saying like if people have done, you know, like like crazy things in life. I'm not saying like on the scale of that part, but just the odd like mistake or whatever, like whatever it is. Like, you know, like ran and got a red light speeding ticket or something as a celebrity and they're trying to be a good role model or whatever. And you know, benefit of the doubt there. But if they there are people in this world that are in good positions of power and they 
they do things that you don't get to see but people worship these people and then these things come to fruition and to light out in the the press and it just it just it's, it just goes to show like something personal at me here taylor <laughs> yeah no i just i just like how this episode goes to show just how the transition and how easily people's minds are just swayed by just the media and how things are i'm not saying this that wasn't this wasn't easy though again this was uh, her being a nazi it's not like a little thing this no a i know thing. i know but what i'm saying is they're swayed to believe that this person is good and 100 mm. percent pure of heart when this whole time she was manipulating them without them even knowing and she was leading this war on racism to preach uh, and support uh anti racism and just to be against race white and stuff genocide. like that yeah white genocide <laughs> and it's just it's just something like that that's just it's it's terrifying her whole speech to ryan just had me cringing in my chair and had me so fucking uncomfortable even well even homelander was uncomfortable yeah even homelander was uncomfortable and the downside is that's a very it's a very real thing i uh, just and i just i i just it just baffles me these people in the world that just the just I, I want people to just think for themselves i think this this whole season has just had me really self-reflect on so many things and i applaud this show for tackling so many so many just interesting topics and just scenarios in general because i think it's very eye-opening and i think people need to just be a little bit more like that if there's one thing you can take away from the boys aside from the humor and the gore and just the crazy storylines is the ability just to open your eyes a little bit into our own world so there's my two cents. There you go. Taylor's moment right there. We got a whole look in Taylor's mind. He's literally just setting you up, though. So one day when bad tweets come out about him, he's like, oh, no, don't judge me. I didn't speed that red light. I, it was a green light, I swear. <laughs> Is that some French accent mixed no, with something I was else? Not, dude, I was just doing a Taylor Peel accent. No, I'm that preparing. specifically French accent. I'm preparing people for when those Nick Cage tweets come out because I don't want people to just you know, give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, he's not a Nazi. Calm down. <laughs> oh. uh, well, I think that's everything I have on the boys. How about you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we covered everything. I mean, I'm again, season three, we're going to see that lady telepathic chick come back obviously um, it's not even a storyline like she just they just write her out like oh she moved <laughs> and like nothing ever comes of it. <laughs> um yeah we talked about uh the deep talked about a train talked about starlight talked about huey all the boys talked about stormfront talked about uh homelander uh yeah i think that's pretty much it i do like when homelander was talking about just how everything was falling apart, like uh, um, uh, Black Noir is in like in ER or whatever, getting dealt with, and he's like lamplighter just like fucking exploded or something like that. <laughs> and yeah, that was so good. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I and I think I did this season one because it, it was a binge novel. But like, if I had to give this a grade it's like a 9.7 the only thing that keeps it is i still feel like some of the stuff with the deep needs to be fine-tuned a little bit i hope they do that next season but uh the first season i gave a 9.5 this is 9.7 as far as enjoyment it's like a honestly it's probably a 10 out of 10 but like as far as like me looking at it, that's why i try to give two ratings as like critically as far as like if i have any problems it's like a 9.7 but i already feel like this show is an all-time classic already I hope it ends off better. Whenever we end, I hope it doesn't go Game of Thrones route where Game of Thrones I love. Mm. So I look back on it now. I'm like, ugh. It doesn't feel like a waste of time, but it just feels like, man, what a deflation that was. So I hope that doesn't happen because, like I said, I feel like this is the new kind of Game of Thrones. But another fantastic season, and I'm just – I'm bummed it's over already. I, I Honestly, when it ended, I was thinking about going back to watch season one because I, I, I want some more boys, so. Yeah, I I could honestly I could see myself rewatching it. I just I'm glad that we did this uh, review for season two because I didn't have uh, I don't know what happened, but I I had Madison for the first season and she just watched the first three episodes of this season and she was out, so that kind of sucked. Yeah, Emily didn't finish so, the season with me either. I don't know what that says about the female demographic, but yeah, I don't know either. But I mean, I I would give this season easily a 10 out of 10 easily. it was just yeah easily it had I, again the messaging in it i thought was very deep and very no pun intended very just uh intense and powerful and i thought the humor was just on point that i was just laughing so freaking much the the jokes were great the 
a variety of soups that they threw in this season was awesome. I love seeing the development of the characters. I love seeing the progression of the storylines. I love just everything about this this show is just so good it's taken off from season one in so many different directions set the stage for season three and just has me absolutely ecstatic so i cannot recommend this show enough and i am choked that no one else in the podcast has actually watched this show they should be ashamed of themselves no, they should <laughs> so, be ashamed of themselves already you know oh <laughs> we can bring we'll bring we'll bring that up on after nine ask them why they haven't watched it you know Ask Kyle, ask Liam, too. They're there. Liam just hates everything that's a fucking superhero, so that's what he's going to say. But I'm going to try to pitch. We'll try to pitch them to watch the boys. And if any patrons mm-hmm. call in, we'll talk about it. So, well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in this review series. The next time we'll be doing this, we got two coming up for the rest of 2020. The Mandalorian, which is starting in, uh, what is it, 21 days. Crazy. And then... 21 days. 21 days. Oh, yeah. We, we just went to another day, didn't we? Yep. And then, um, and then after that will be WandaVision. So we're going to have two back-to-back where me and doing that like this where we're going to be reviewing them weekly. Not sure. Sometimes kind of, kind of be the same as this where it might be on a Thursday, might be Friday, might be Saturday. Kind of depends on the schedules. But uh, yeah, until then, we promise you it'll not be boring. Bye-bye.